Let's go over all the convolution slash correlation operations that happen in the convolutional neural networks. All the examples are first explained visually and then I will show the code in PyTorch and NumPy to verify the understanding of various operations. By the way, this tutorial will make more sense if you are familiar with the notion of sliding correlation. I have a tutorial on my channel where I build what I call the correlation machine, so check it out if need be. To start simple and get familiar with the terminology, let's start with only one channel and this channel is one dimensional. Think of it as a one dimensional image. In the convolutional neural networks, for each input channel, you will have a minimum of one corresponding kernel. Let's say that this is a kernel for this channel. In signal processing, this kernel is called the filter. The term filter or filters in convolutional neural networks is used differently and I will explain it later in the tutorial. And we will do cross correlation between the channel and the kernel. In these examples, I will not do any padding. So we will start by centering on the second element in the channel, the one where you see the arrow like this. And we will store the result in another vector. I have labeled it as F. F here stands for feature map. This will be the output of running the correlation machine. Note that the size of this feature map is not same as that of the input channel. If we desire the size of the feature map to be same as that of input channel, then we would have to use the padding. And I talk about different padding schemes in the other tutorial that I mentioned earlier. That said, in this tutorial, I will not be using any padding. Here is our correlation machine. We multiply the entries of the kernel with the entries of the channel and then sum the entries of the resulting vector. We then go to the next entry and let it run over the rest of the channel. Let's now see the corresponding PyTorch code. So we will be using one input channel and we desire one output channel or one feature map. Valid padding means no padding. Must say this is really a weird terminology. In PyTorch, the number of channels are specified in the second dimension. The first dimension here is for the number of examples in the batch and the last dimension is for the number of entries in each channel. Here I am showing the weights or the kernel associated with this convolution layer. Again, there is one input channel, so we have one kernel. We can get the result of the convolution like this. And next I will show that it is indeed correlation and not convolution operation by using the NumPy API. I am taking the input channel and the kernel of the convolutional layer and passing them to the correlate API of NumPy. You can see that the result from PyTorch matches that of the one from the NumPy. Here I am doing the operation manually that is not even using NumPy API. And you can see the result is still the same. So as I mentioned earlier in my previous tutorial that the term or the name convolutional neural network is actually a misnomer. The operation performed is correlation and not convolution. Let's now do an example where we have two input channels and for each input channel we will have a corresponding feature map. Channel 1 will produce feature map 1 and channel 2 will produce feature map 2. This also means that there will be two kernels, k1 for channel 1 and k2 for channel 2. Let's run our correlation machine using kernel 1 on channel 1 and generate the feature map 1. And now let's do it for kernel 2 and channel 2 so that we can get the feature map 2. So this is good. We had two channels, which means we had two kernels, one for each channel resulting in two feature maps. But what if we desire to get only one feature map? In other words, how would you get only one output channel? And this is achieved by adding the entries of the feature map one and feature map two like this. I have created another vector O in which the result of the addition of F1 and F2 is now being stored. 
Let's finish for the rest of the entries. And now we look at the PyTorch code. As mentioned earlier in the in the tutorial, the number of channels is specified in the second dimension. So this is why you see a two here. Remember for each input channel, we will have a corresponding kernel. And is the case here. The convolutional layer has now two weights or two kernels. Now I will use the NumPy correlate API to correlate kernel 1 with the input channel 1. I have even stored the values of these kernels in first underscore kernel and second underscore kernel. So first I have done the correlation with the channel 1 and first kernel, this one, and also channel 2 and the second kernel. Let's add the two feature maps that we have computed using the NumPy correlate API and then verify using the PyTorch API that if it is producing the same output or rather we are producing the same output using NumPy API and it is the same. Since the outputs of our addition of feature maps from NumPy matches that of PyTorch convolution layer, we can now be sure that our understanding of operations is correct. Next, I will show you another variation and also introduce you to the concept of filters in convolutional neural networks. So far, we have seen that number of kernels generated by PyTorch or for that matter, any deep learning framework is same as that of number of input channels. That's what all the examples have shown so far. Now, uh, perhaps using or learning one kernel per channel is very limiting. In neural network, you would want to have kernels that could identify different aspects of your image. For example, one kernel could be to find the boundaries in the image, other could be to find the corner of an eye, and many others for other aspects or features in the image. In simple words, one kernel per input channel is never going to be sufficient. So the remedy should be clear. We would like to create many kernels for every input channel or may I say that we want a collection of kernels per channel a collection for channel 1 and a collection for channel 2 this so-called collection of kernels per channel is called filter in convolutional neural networks I personally prefer the term filter bank versus collection or versus just plain filter so let's say that you want two kernels per channel then you would want to have two filter banks. Both of these filter banks will contain the number of kernels equal to the number of input channels. Filter bank 1 will have k1 and k2 where k1 will be for channel 1 and k2 will be for channel 2. Same story for filter bank 2. It also has k1 and k2. k1 for channel 1 and k2 for channel 2. Let's run our correlation machine using the kernels in the filter bank 1. The process is same as before. We will end up getting two feature maps and then we will add them up like this. And here is the process for filter bank 2. So now the main question that you should ask is how do we tell the PyTorch API that we need two filter banks? Two filter banks again implies two kernels per input channel. So let's look at the code to figure this out. The specification of how many filter banks to use is done by out channels. Out channels equals to two. Here we have the value of two, which means we would be generating two kernels per input channel. We are expecting now four kernels as you can do the math. The first two, by the way, are going to belong to filter bank one and the second, the, sec the, the other two will belong to filter bank two. So here we have kernels from filter bank one, first kernel and second kernel. You can see that I am getting the, the first two out and then generating the feature maps and then adding them as well. 
and finally we repeat the operation for the for the channels but this time using the kernels from the filter bank 2 let's verify our numpy based computation with the output given by the pytorch convolution layer and as you can see they are the same by the way, many people assume that all kernels in the convolutional layer convolve or correlate with all the input channels. Hopefully you were able to see using the visualization that I gave as well as the code examples that it is not the case. It seems to be a common confusion for many. So hopefully it is clear now. I am including the link to the notebook in the description of the video so you can play around with the code examples to further strengthen your understanding. And with that, we are done here for today. Hope this tutorial was helpful and useful in getting a clearer understanding. Bye-bye and see you again in the next tutorial. Bye.